Good day grade 10. In this lesson we're going to be looking at how to represent functions. Now there's several ways that we can represent a function. The first thing is called mapping. What mapping does is basically helps us to draw what is called a spider diagram. The reason it's called a spider diagram diagram is because it's got lots of legs. Okay and what it really does is help us to relate our input, our input which in this case is minus 3, 0 and 2, it goes through the function and you get out an output. So what we're saying is that if we have an input of minus 3, then we have an output of 2 times minus 3 plus 5, which is going to be 2 times minus 3 is minus 6 plus 5 is minus 1. So that is a mapping. What we're saying is our input is minus 3, the function is 2x plus 5, and the output is minus 1. Now let's put in the next one of 0. So if we've got 0 into this, 2 times 0 is 0 plus 5, we get out 5. And then here we go that there if we put this number in as a new input of x because our input is always your x and your output is always your y if we put the x in it's 2 times 2 which is 4 plus 5 which is 9 and you can see why it is called a spider diagram because if I did another number now you'd end up with four legs on each side so that is one way that we can re represent a function we can use mapping Another way that we can represent a function is one that we've done already and it is using a table where we decide what our input is, number is and then we fill in our output. So again, if our input is minus 3, we've got 2 times minus 3 plus 5, which is going to be given as, given as 2 times minus 3 is minus 6 plus 5 is minus 1. So if we can write minus 1 here. Then if it's 0, 2 times 0 is 0 plus 5 is 5. And 2 times 2 is 4 plus 5 is 9. Now these numbers here are called ordered pairs. In other words, we can write them as an x y pair of points or a set of coordinates. So in other words, this would be written as minus 3, minus 1, 0, 5, and 2, 9. So these three points are three sets of coordinates or three sets of ordered pairs. Now we're going to use this information to show you the third way that we can represent a function and that is using a graph. So we're, so far we've got y is equal to 2x plus 5 and we've got our three ordered pairs. Now what we're going to do is we're going to plot our ordered pairs. So we're going to go across to minus 3 and minus 1 and draw a dot. We're going to go north and up to there and draw in a dot. And we're going to go to and up to 9 and join a dot. And then I'm going to try and do this on the thing. You guys will use a ruler to join your dots, okay? So you won't have any of these wobbliness. And that is our straight line, which is y is equal to 2x plus 5. So we can use our ordered pairs to draw a graph of a function. So even if you don't know what the function looks like, by using our ordered pairs and other information, we can draw the graph. Now, we can also describe the graph using things like domain and range. Now, domain is how far, effectively, it is how far the graph extends across the x extend across the x. Oopsie, I'm sorry about writing across it. The x-axis. So in other words, we want to know how far this graph is going all the way. In other words, when does it end? Okay, but now if you look at these two arrows at the end, do you know what those two arrows mean? That means that this graph is going to carry on infinitely long that way and it is going to carry on infinitely long that way. That's what those arrows mean. There's no end. So do you agree that means that actually 
your domain, which is how far this graph is going to send, is going to go all the way through to minus infinity, and it's going to go all the way through to plus infinity. So now we can use our different types of notations that we've learned how to write. We can either say x is going to be smaller than infinity and bigger than negative infinity for x is an element of real values, or we can just go from minus infinity to plus infinity. So that is your domain. Now your range is how far the graph extends, extends across, wait for it, what do you think? Across the Y axis. Now the way I remember this, because a lot of students get to struggle to remember which one is the X and which one is the Y, is that we always think that domain is written, if you want to think about it, above the line. If you're going to write it like that, it's above the line, and so is your X, also above the line. Whereas your range has got a nice G, so it goes below the line and so does y. So both your g and your y have got these little hangy legs at the bottom and that's how I remember that the range is the y and the domain is the x. So again these arrows mean that this graph is going to carry on and on and on and on down forever and it's going to carry on and on and on up forever. So just like with the domain in the straight round graph this is going to be y is smaller than infinity and bigger than minus infinity. I'm going to put a little arrow bracket there, for y is an element of real values. So those are the three ways that we can represent. We can map, we can use a table, and we can use a graph. And we will be teaching you a little bit more about this with specific functions in the next few lessons. Make sure you understand and can use all three methods to represent your functions before you carry on. Have a great day, grade 10s.